Lesson 34 is about colors and wavelengths. We began our study of light in this book in Lesson 31 with Snell's Law talking about how light is bent when it passes through different mediums. Part A of this lesson, we're going to talk about colors of light. And something to think about here, light is a form of energy. It's called electromagnetic energy. And we'll talk about that in more detail later. But light is electromagnetic energy that we can see. So a conclusion there is that there are forms of electromagnetic energy that we cannot see. Radio waves, microwaves, gamma rays, that's radiation. That's a powerful form, the, about the most powerful form of electromagnetic radiation is gamma rays. There's also x-rays. All of those are forms of electromagnetic energy that we cannot see. Light is just one part of the spectrum of electromagnetic energy. Now red, green, and blue, those light rays, those are called the additive primary colors and those are the main ones that combine to form white light. The sun emits white light. White light is all of the different wavelengths of visible light combined together. And all of the other colors in the visible spectrum, those can be created by mixing different amounts of red, green, and blue light together. Each color of light has a specific wavelength and frequency. And the frequency is usually used to determine the amount of energy that that particular color of light possesses. So there are some types of light that have lower energy than other forms. For example, red is pretty much the lowest energy form of light. Then there's green, then blue is higher. Now something that could be a little bit confusing is that Red, green, and blue are considered the additive primary colors. Those can be combined to form any color of light. Now, subtractive primary colors, those are what painters use, cyan, magenta, and yellow. They can combine those to form any color of paint. To understand the difference here, think about what happens when light hits, or white light hits red paint. So, Let's say your eye is over here, and white light comes in, and it hits this surface that has some red paint on it. Now, all of the colors, remember white light is all of the wavelengths of light combined. All of those colors are absorbed except for red, and so red gets reflected to your eye, bounces off your retina, and there's different things, complex things that go on to allow you to identify that as red. So what paints do is absorb different colors of light and reflect certain ones. Cyan, magenta, and yellow paints can be mixed together to absorb all kinds of varieties of wavelengths of light and then reflect to your eyes just specific colors. Additive primary colors, those are the wavelengths themselves. Those are the wavelengths of light. You can mix different quantities of red, green, and blue, and you can get a variety of wavelengths of light. What you're looking at right now on the computer, the computer screen is basically electromagnetic energy coming at you. So it doesn't really have anything to do with paints. It has to do with specific wavelengths of light. So that red line over there next to additive primary colors, that's red wavelengths coming at you. To understand that, just think about it. You could turn your computer off, right, completely. You wouldn't have to have any white light bouncing off of the computer screen to come back to your eye. It's generating wavelengths of light that go directly to your eye. Most paint colors are created so that they will reflect white light and you'll see a certain color based on the reflection of white light. Let's go on to part B of this lesson. Let's think about some things that we've already learned about electromagnetic light energy. In lesson 31, we learned that the speed of light in a vacuum is 300 million or 3.00 times 10 to the 8 
meters per second. That's the speed for all frequencies of light in a vacuum. All the different colors of light. Remember we said each color of light has a specific wavelength and frequency. So all of those different wavelengths, or we'll just say all those different frequencies, they have a speed in a vacuum of 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Now it just so happens that the speed, or we'll call that velocity, in a medium x, that's going to be equal to the frequency of that particular light times its wavelength, and we use the Greek letter lambda, and we'll say lambda sub x. The frequency never changes for a particular wavelength of light, or more clearly, a particular color of light. The frequency never changes. The wavelength may change, though, depending on the medium. So we're just using a variable here because we have a variety of different mediums that light can pass through, right? So we're saying a medium x, the velocity in medium x is equal to the frequency, which will never change for that particular color of light, times the wavelength. So usually, well, pretty much always, I don't think there's any cases where this isn't true, when light passes through a medium other than a vacuum, it's going to be slower than that 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So that means when light passes through mediums that are not a, other than a vacuum, the wavelength for that particular color is a little bit less. So here's some other things to consider that are important in understanding light. Vx equals frequency times wavelength. So we use meters per second for our speeds usually when we're talking about the speed of light. So a frequency, that means the number of wavelengths that pass per second. And the frequency therefore has units of 1 over seconds because wavelength has units of meters. We multiply those together to get meters per second. Another important thing that we've talked about is the frequency for a particular color of light never changes. Something new here, the period T, that equals 1 over the frequency. That's the time it takes for one wavelength to pass. We can think of light as having a sinusoid pattern like this. So one wavelength of light would be from one peak to one peak, or maybe one trough to one trough. That's what lambda is for a particular frequency of light. That's the wavelength. The time it takes one wavelength to pass a given spot, that's what the period is. The frequency is how many wavelengths pass per second. And then the last thing there, the speed of all frequencies of light is equal to 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second in a vacuum. It's also called free space. Let's go ahead and do a practice problem now. This one says the period of a light ray is 5.09 times 10 to the minus 12 seconds. A, find its frequency. B, if the wavelength is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3 meters, find the speed of the light ray. C, is the light ray traveling through air? Well, let's just go ahead and solve this one at a time. We want to find the frequency first. Well, what have we been given here? We've been given the period, and remember what the relationship is between frequency and period? The period is 1 over the frequency. So if we rearrange that, the frequency is 1 over the period. So we just have to do 1 over 5.09 times 10 to the negative 12 seconds. And if you do that on your calculator, you'll end up with about 1.9646 times 10 to the 11th, and that's 1 over seconds. Now, we also use hertz for units for frequency. Instead of saying 1 over seconds, a more common unit is hertz, capital H-Z, and it's 
spelled out H-E-R-T-Z. Let's round this to three significant digits, and so we would say that the frequency is equal to 1.96 times 10 to the 11th hertz. Let's go on to part B now. It says that if the wavelength of the ray is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3 meters, find the speed of the light ray. Well, what do we know about speed of light? We know that there's a relationship B equals frequency times wavelength. And the speed in a medium X equals the frequency times the wavelength in a medium X. Let's, let's remember that as well. Frequency never changes, just the wavelength does. We don't know what medium this light is traveling through, but it doesn't matter. We can still calculate the speed for whatever medium this is. So we just say V is equal to 1.96, and let's use 1.9646. We should never use our rounded form when we're calculating a new answer. Use the unrounded form. 1.9646 times 10 to the 11th, and then that's going to be times our wavelength of 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. So we have hertz times meters, or 1 per second times meter. We'll get 2.358 times 10 to the 8th, which we need to round to three decimal places. Actually, two decimal places because of the 1.2, so we'll say 2.4 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. That's the speed of this particular light ray. Now problem C, or part C, that asks us, is the light ray traveling through air? Well, how are we supposed to know that? Well, think about it. Think about what the speed of light in air usually is. Air is almost like a vacuum, so it's real close to 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. We have 2.4 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. If you're not real convinced that the speed of light in air is about 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, go back and look at that table on page 197. And that might help you think about this a little bit more. But we have a 2.4 times 10 to the 8 meters per second speed, so we would say no. Most likely that light ray is not traveling through air. You would expect it to have a speed closer to 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Frequency of a light ray never changes. Just its wavelength changes as it travels through a medium. And the speed of a light ray depends on its frequency, or it's the product of the frequency, times the wavelength. And that wavelength is measured in that particular medium. Now, don't get confused here. All different colors of light have different frequencies. It's just that for a particular frequency or a particular color of light, its frequency will not change regardless of what medium it's traveling through. Okay, well that's all for lesson 34.